Okay, let's talk about the GRE and specifically the math section on the GRE. And if you're watching this video, I assume you're getting ready to go to graduate school. So congratulations on, on that. So the GRE is very much like another test out there, the GMAT, but the GMAT is a little bit different because the GMAT uh, is typically used for like business school, maybe like getting your MBA. They'll probably want you to take the GMAT versus the GRE. So the GRE is a little bit more universal. But basically, both of these tests are just like another ticket you have to punch to get into grad school, kind of like the SAT or ACT of uh, grad school. That's basically what they are. And there's a considerable amount of math on both. Uh, basically, I like to kind of think of them as like really advanced high school level mathematics. So a little bit about myself. I'm a middle school uh, and high school math teacher and even taught beyond that level. So this is what I do. And um, I actually have a uh, an awesome GRE math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check this out. But the purpose of this video is to give you kind of a little pop quiz, see where you uh, may be at with your current uh, math abilities. Again, this is by no way inclusive, but you should be able to solve this particular problem um, you know, as part of the algebra skills you need, you need to kind of have for the GRE and or G, uh, GMAT. Okay, so here's the problem. What I'd like you to do is to solve for x. Okay, so solve for x. And another way to express this problem is to write this equation in terms of x or solve for x. All right, so maybe you want to pause the video, see if you can do it. Of course, I'm going to solve it, and then we'll kind of talk a little bit more about the, the ideas behind uh, doing this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this equ uh, equation now. So I'm going to solve for x. So what you need to uh, do in, a, in a, basically an equation like this is that we have variables, and we don't have other numbers going on. So I have to think of x as the only variable um, uh, in this equation. So in other words, I'm going to be thinking conceptually that h and m and n are like, we're going to treat them as numbers. So let's just kind of a pretend that h, m, and n were numbers. So let's say we we had 10, right? Let's say for h, and let's say we had 2, and then we had this x, and then we had this 3 up here, okay, as our exponent. So the steps I would take to solve this problem, okay, is the same steps I'm going to be taking to solve this problem. So anytime you're, you're asked to solve uh, uh, this is kind of like a formula, rewriting a formula where there's multiple variables going on. The best way to approach this is to think, okay, it's asking me to fault, solve for x, so I'm going to just think of that particular uh, variable as the only variable in the problem and treat everything else kind of as a number, and then you can just kind of go through it. So let's just actually solve this, this guy right here, and we can write it this way, 2x cubed equals 10. Let's take a look at the steps to solve this. Now, hopefully you can solve this equation and you might want to pause the video and give it a whirl. Okay, so all we're going to do here is divide both sides of the equation by 2. I get x cubed is equal to 5. And then to get to x, I need to take the cube root of both sides. So let's show that over here. Okay, so if I would take the cube root of both sides, I get x is equal to the cube root of 5. Okay. Now, there are some other uh, details that can involve the signs, whether it's positive or negative, but let's just kind of stick to the basics here. So if you got to this point, that's good. Another way you could have shown this, uh, the cube root of 5, okay, let's kind of go down here, x cubed equals 5. This is, um, this is an exponential type of equation, so I could just take both sides to the one-third power. Okay, so I get x is equal to 5 to the 1 third, and you should know that that is equivalent to the cube root of 5, okay? Actually, I, uh, I said this is, this is an exponential equation that's incorrect. An exponential equation is where, you, where the variable is in the exponent, something like e to the x equals 10. That's an exponential equation. This is just a, basically uh, a simple equation involving powers and exponents. Okay, so let's go back. Now that we know how to handle this with numbers, let's use the same idea here, okay? Now, the first thing is, just look, I divided both sides of the equation by two. So here I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by m. So I'm gonna get h over m, and put those in grouping symbols, is equal to x to the n. Okay, now to get 
to the uh, x to solve for x, I need to take, let's kind of do it down here, I need to take both sides of the equation to the nth root. Okay, so you can, we can do it this way. We have x to the n. So I can just take both sides of the equation to the nth root. So effectively, if you gave me something like x is equal to uh, the nth root of h over m, then that would be a pretty satisfactory uh, answer. Okay. Of course, there's other ways we can kind of express this, but this is uh, hopefully what you came up with. Now, if you had trouble with this problem, definitely don't despair. There's hope. Okay. Uh, you definitely uh, uh, can rejuvenate these math skills. I mean, if you have your degree and you're obviously going to graduate school, you've already taken a good enough, a good amount of mathematics. Now, the one thing that I would say is that even if you were strong in math, that doesn't, you know, that you've probably been away for it for a long time. So you're going to have to rejuvenate a lot of these uh, skills. If you were not that strong in math, you can, you know, uh, get better at math. And one of the things that you should know is this, just because you were maybe weaker in math in high school and in college, it has nothing to do with your ability to do well now. Okay, there's a lot of people have this fallacy that, oh, they have these identity uh, statements. They're like, I am not good in math. I am bad at math. And they, and they just, it's just like self-fulfilling prophecies. That couldn't be further from the truth. And believe me, this is what I do. So uh, whether you are uh, been away from math for a long time or you struggled in the past has nothing to, with, to do with your ability to, to learn math now. And if you want to, you know, get the best GRE or GMAT scores, you really do need to uh, step up your math game. Okay. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you like my teaching style, I'll leave a link in the description of this video to my GRE uh, math prep course. Also, on my YouTube channel, I literally have hundreds of videos that can help you out for this uh, exam as well. And if you like the video, Definitely uh, appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, uh, was your particular grad school situation, uh, the, did they give you an option of taking a GMAT? Again, I know the GMAT is more for business school, but uh, maybe you're watching this and you're not sure whether you're going to be taking a GRE or GMAT or you're going for business school and you have to take the GRE. You know, every college is a little bit different, but in general, the GMAT is for business school. But leave me any kind of feedback. I'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the GRE. Thanks for watching and have a great day.